Hello and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper and today we're going to take a look at what direction the SR240Z project is taking next. As with any good project car, you are typically making changes before you've even found out what other changes have had an effect. In this case, I barely have this car running and after only a few trips on the street and a few dyno tuning pulls, I've decided I need to make some major changes. So the first off is there's currently coilover suspension sitting on the shelf waiting to go on this car, but I had wanted to test out the lowering springs and shocks first to do a side-by-side -side comparison before I switched over. Unfortunately, this suspension setup does not work well with my current configuration and does not work at all with the wheels and tires I have on the car. Now I could buy new wheels and tires, but by putting the coilovers on, the backspacing available to me will change and I don't want to buy wheels and tires that aren't optimal for the final suspension system. So rather than buying a lot of different parts, I'm going to go ahead and just skip to installing the coilover setup and then do all my testing with that system. We will also be changing out the transmission because now that I've had a chance to put a few miles on the car and we've had it on the dyno, I don't have a lot of confidence in the transmission that came with the SR. It has a significant whine to it. The bearings just don't sound healthy. And while it does shift fairly well, I don't know that it's gonna handle the power the car is going to be putting down. Right now in the conservative break-in basic tune, I'm making 350 wheel horsepower plus with over 400 horsepower at the crank most likely. And the car is only going to get significantly more powerful once we get it broken in. So knowing this, I don't want to grenade a transmission that's going to set me back a lot more in my project and take the car off the road for even longer. So I'm going to be replacing the transmission as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the parts I've got and talk about why I selected them. The suspension setup that I chose for this project is the Technotoy tuning setup specifically because of the feedback I received from people who had bought the system. Now, there's several options out there for the S30 chassis cars, and the Techno Toy tuning option is probably in the middle to upper end of the price range. Arizona Z car makes a really nice kit that is very track focused, but this car will be used on the street as well as in multiple different types of motorsport event and I wanted something that could do a pretty good all-around job. When you order the Technotoy tuning setup, you have the ability to specify the vehicle or the vehicle weight and purpose and help get a suggestion on the amount of dampening and rebound that you need in your setup. So that's what I did with this kit and I got their feedback and their suggestions on this particular configuration. As with all my parts, I don't have any sponsors and I don't make any money on the YouTube videos, so price is a major consideration. With a kit as expensive as this, which was somewhere near the $4,000 mark, you have to have pretty high expectations and that's no different with myself. I expect this kit to work very well and fit very well. And I will be doing a thorough evaluation of any fitment issues and any general difficulties I encounter with the setup. Based on the reviews that I've seen, there should be very little. This is actually a very well regarded setup. So let's go ahead, get the boxes open and see what we've got.
As you can see, this is a very complete setup for the Z car. This is their evolved coilover system with lower control arms. With the front and rear lower control arms, that will give me the ability to dial in more specifically for these wheels and tires, as well as any wheels and tires in the future I will have. And it will give me a much better control over getting that more aggressive track attack angles that I need depending on how aggressive of rubber I'm running. The fit and finish on this system is great. As you can see with the Evolve setup, it has spindles, everything's pre-assembled, welded nicely. It has nice powder coated finishes and anodized finishes. It's mostly to the point where this is almost as simple as doing basic maintenance on one of these cars. So this should go into the car pretty quickly. Unfortunately, I will have to be traveling in the next month or so quite a bit. So I don't know when I'll get a chance to get it completely done, but as soon as I do, you'll see it in another video. So let's go ahead and take a look at the transmission. This is the CD009 transmission with Mazworks bell housing adapter. So I had Mazworks go ahead and machine and attach their adapter before they shipped the transmission which is a brand new from Nissan transmission. They also installed this adapter relocator for the shifter as well as a short shifter setup. This entire unit is exactly what I settled on after doing significant research on the best for my particular application. The CD00A transmission is an evolution of the CD009, which came in the 350Zs and early 370Zs as far as all of the general package other than synchros and a couple other minor revisions. The total package for the CD00A is capable of over 800 horsepower reliably, but also provides me with a six speed transmission as opposed to five, which will be much more friendly to a varying turbo setup as I start to upgrade things in the future. This particular solution was weighed against the VG series transmissions from the 90s 300ZX, but ultimately the six speed won out as well as the reliability of this transmission. I've seen this on everything from V8s to 2JZ cars pushing a thousand horsepower and everyone speaks very highly of it. So it should be perfect for this application. Now, Mazworks' adapter is bigger than what the S13 bell housing is on that transmission, so I will probably need to do some massaging or relocation. And the actual length to the tail for the driveline is actually shorter, so I'll need a longer driveline. The shifter is set slightly farther back than the SR shifter, so I will need to elongate the opening and make adapters for my positioning within the car, as well as any center console that I'm going to put over the top of this. Ultimately, it shouldn't be too extremely difficult, but it will be somewhat time consuming. So I will start to dive into this project in the next, next couple weeks as work allows, and hopefully get a new video out in not too long. Thank you all for watching. This has been a brief update on the SR240Z project and some changes that will be happening in the very near future. If you have any questions, just toss them in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.